Mahmoud Kali shows me the damage after an early morning fire at his brother's house. He heard cries and broke down the door to find his brother with severe burns and his four-year-old nephew Ashraf dead. For Ashraf's mother, the grief and the responsibility is hard to bear. There was a power cut and it was still dark. I had to get the children ready for school, so I lit a candle. Then we went out and I forgot all about the candle. The family say they can only dream of getting a generator, which many people here rely on to get through daily eight-hour blackouts. But generators can be dangerous too. Sami Shanti paid $20,000 for his, a fortune in Gaza, but he needs it to light his clothes shop and run the machinery. He says it's the only way to ensure a constant power supply. The whole area is at risk from generators. Next to mine, I have a fuel tank. It's the same at my neighbor's. If there's a short circuit, everything could go up in flames. This is where Gaza's electricity comes from, a private power station built in the 1990s. The manager says one of the main problems is the plant doesn't have even enough fuel to run the two of its four gas generators that are working. Some fuel supplies, including most of the 29 million litres promised by Qatar, have been held up in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. Officials there blame security problems for the delay. It's hard to predict when fuel tankers like this will arrive at Gaza's power station. When they do make it here, what they bring is supposed to fill that tank over there, but at the moment, it's only half full at best. For Gaza, everything is politics. You cannot even plan for next day. The fuel, for example, the fuel we have right now for this power plant is sufficient for day, two days for two units. If there is no fuel tomorrow, then the day after I have to shut down this power plant completely. The blackouts and several deaths this year caused by house fires and exploding generators have led to protests against Gaza's Hamas rulers. Government officials, though, insist they're doing all they can. All these sad events are the result of Israeli actions against the Palestinians, including the general blockade, preventing any solution to Gaza's electricity problems. The Palestinian government is suffering just like the population, and they're reaching out to the Arab world and internationally to solve the crisis. What's clear is that many of Gaza's poor residents have no choice but to find their own solutions, even though the consequences can be fatal. Nadim Barber, Al Jazeera, Gaza.